I'm talking to Johnny Gioelli, uh, and he's from Hardline. Remember that band? They're still around, right? How long have you been? Yes, how, how long I have think you, I am. How long have you been doing this Hardline <laughs> gig, man? Oh, man. I think, okay, so my mom gave birth to me in 67. Oh. So let me think here. No. Uh, Ouch. So no, I'm just kidding. Hard, Hardline is now, uh, my God, uh, th- almost 30 years. Wow. Th- the original. Yeah, so... Hardline got together in 89, then we put out that, 89, 90, yeah, and then we put out that, the beautiful Double Eclipse album yes. in 92, so awesome. and then we're still playing still those songs um, today, it's crazy, man, awesome. it's a beautiful thing. Uh, yes, after all those years still doing it, and your voice, by the way, you've got one of the best voices in rock music, and I can speak for a lot of people that say that, man, and you still got it, you sound the same oh, as bro. you did all those years ago. You know, how does that happen? Gary, thank you. I'll send the check. <laughs> um, yeah, right. My address is. <laughs> I think, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I, um, I always say this. So I've lived the oxymoron rock life. I never really got into, I, I not really, I never got into drugs or, you know, power alcohol. I have a drink right. here and there, you right. know, with friends or whatever. But I think that had a lot to do with you know a good you know a good healthy life yeah. keeps your entire body healthy i think i think that had something to do with it and um yeah and uh, and a happy life yeah i think all of that that entire combination you know sort of helps with the longevity and i always say this man as soon as the fans say, hey, man, Johnny Gioelli can't, he really can't sing anymore. He's really, he's, he's tired. He's whatever. That's when I stop, bro. That's right. when it's done. I leave it up to the people, um, mm. you know, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys out there, you know, they're having fun. They're doing what they're doing and they're, they're singing, but they just, it, yeah. it just, the shit doesn't work anymore. It's kind of sad. And yeah. It, it happens. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it happens. We, we physically get old and shit doesn't work the same yeah i mean i know there's a lot of guys out there with body parts that don't work the same mine still do <laughs> thank god but that's yeah, always that's good kinda, that's good that's always good that's our next that's, topic uh, no i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but you know that's that's uh for me i think that's uh that's worked and thank you for saying that man yeah. I, I try real hard i take it I take it all very, very seriously. Right. You know, when I'm performing, when I'm recording or performing live, and no shortcuts for me. Um, just do it right, or or don't do it. You know, kind of attitude. Right. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, well, how did you realize you wanted to sing, and and who were your influences when you were growing up? And you said, I want to sing like that. I want to pattern my voice maybe after that that's wild man it's a good question um so you know i started out um i started actually out in the theater wow so i was like one of these off-broadway kids i was eight years old so from eight to 11 i was doing off-broadway musicals and stuff like that and um so my singing actually started from the theater stage and i didn't know that i could sing i had no idea wow and i got this one show i don't know bye bye birdie or one some musical you know yeah. And the musical director said, okay, Johnny, let's go. We have to work on the songs. And I'm thinking, well, shit, brother, I don't know how to <laughs> sing. And I was just a little kid, so I wasn't afraid. That's the cool thing. You know, what you what you don't learn, you know, you're not – a. I mean, what, you're not afraid yeah. what you don't know. You know what I mean? Right. So he's, he hits this keyboard. He's like, ding, ding, ding. He's like, okay, Johnny. I'm like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> He's like, no, Johnny, just, uh. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I just kind of emulated the guy and yeah. then it all just bro just connected from there. I don't know how. I don't it's just uh, one of those thank you god yeah um things and um and I do thank him and Amen. the rest is history. Wow. Uh, I just from there it morphed into, you know, watching my older brother Joey who was the uh, original guitar player in Hardline with his with his baby band, high school band in our basement. And watching those guys and saying, wow, man, I want to play rock and roll. I want to do that. Right. And so my brother was my first influence. And then everything that was kind of heavy, you know, Ronnie James Dio, yeah. you know, Sabbath, Rainbow, uh, Scorpions, Klaus, all that, all that, that whole time period. I mean, that was what you know, kind of set me on fire. Right. I loved all that stuff. So that's how it happened, man. Okay. Nice talking to you. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, he's got to go, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. No. Got to go. He's got to go. my voice. That's it. His voice is messing up as we speak. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, you don't want to ruin it. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, well, that, I will tell you, yeah, Gary, I, I literally, bro, I literally got out of the studio. I have a Sega project because a lot of fans know that I'm uh, the singer for Crush 40 that right. did all that gaming, cool gaming music. I right. love it. And I literally just sang nine songs live for this uh, upcoming uh, online live event. And uh, and here I am. Wow. You, you, know, a lot, you know, talking. I'm tired, but here I am. I just love it, man. I, I owe you so much. I'll have, to, I'll have to send you the check, I think, is what. Yep, yeah, please. Okay, my address. <laughs> Your address is. is. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't talk too I, much, though. Your voice all is all. Um, but you, though, you were playing drums, right? In the other band before Hardline, right? Yeah, so I think that was because watching my brother. Uh, with his high school band, I was sitting on the steps in our basement and I would look over the drummer and I just thought it was the coolest thing that you get these wooden sticks yeah. and you beat the shit out of everything. <laughs> Until I realized that you can't really touch the girl's hand in the front row when you're stuck in jail back there. This is true. So that transition happened in the, um, I think around 80. 788 somewhere like that i said okay enough of this i want to i just want to focus on singing and so that's how that transition happened yeah but yeah i love the drums i still play them not not as well as i used to that's for <laughs> sure i'm I'm rusty like an old freaking house nail but uh but i you know still love the instrument well where did the name brunette come from yeah, so brunette was a bunch of long-haired brunette guys with 17 feet collectively of hair. Wow. And it was just one of those 80s things where we were sponsored by a lot of shampoo <laughs> companies, thank God, because we couldn't afford to wash that shit. <laughs> so, uh, and um, yeah, so uh, that's how the, the the name, there were so many like blonde bands, you know, Poison and Tough and all these, right. these, these pretty blonde guys. And we just said, you know, we're going the other way. We're brunette. We're going to be brunette. And that's it. There was not that's a it. whole lot of thought into it. It was well, just like, we're brunette. Let's go with that. <laughs> the name Four Nine Blondes was taken. So you went right, ahead. Right, exactly. And did the br- <laughs> okay, I was just going to, I was trying to remember. Okay, there you go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and you know, what happened to all that hair, by the way? It's not there anymore. You know, so, you know, you get to a point where, it's getting stuck in the crack of everything <laughs> and you're like i want to have a i want to feel my neck yeah and i'm tired of sweating and i'm tired of combing it out and like you know i don't know how these poor ladies do this with this long hair right it was i don't know man how many years 20 something years with it and i just I decided okay it's it's time i think i've had it shorter in my career now than i've had it longer wow. so and my and my parents they cried like babies because that they were so into the whole music yeah. thing with us and uh my mom cried like a baby when we cut our hair but you know i had to do it <laughs> well sometimes i wish you, i had it back but just for like one show and then i'll get rid of it or maybe you could wear like a wig just to bring back uh, memories and headband yeah, or I something I, I actually do that in the privacy of my own there you home, go naked Okay. Naked, wow. I run around the house with the long that, wig on. That was the so. next topic. You know, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> just don't let any pictures show up online. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no. Just, Definitely okay. Not. That's another subject. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, the, but the, the, the album, Hardline, I mean, the uh, Double Clips album, though, the debut album, you know, so awesome. How did you guys come together as Hardline? So. Um, my sister, uh, used to be married to Neil Sean. That was the, the, you know, they were together right. for about eight years, eight plus years together. And every holiday we would go back to our, you know, our, uh, growing up home, uh, in Pennsylvania actually. And we would all meet there for, for Christmas and just enjoy the holidays together. Awesome. And my brother and I, um, just out of brunette kind of splitting that thing up and wanting to go in a direction we were going to be called brothers and it was just going to be like a kind of a really hard rock yeah. nelson kind of project thing right well neil neil heard us playing these songs in the kitchen he comes running and says let me see the guitar 
and we've never asked of anything of 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 Neil like hey can you help us with this oh man you know we just were not we're just not that tight we had to do it on our own we didn't want you anyone to make a phone call for us you right. know what I mean we're just right. hardcore let's let's we're gonna do this ourselves and um he he actually had some inc- I mean he's so brilliant of a guitar player and his chord knowledge and his his writing skills I mean he's just brilliant um and he took some of these songs he's like let me try this try that try the other and so to make a, a very long story short so we don't run out of tape um or digital whatever <laughs> right. uh he uh, we asked him if he would be interested in producing the album that's how it all started and he's like well look i'm i'm working you know with bad english and working on a, another album and i can try in my spare time we're like that's cool let's just you know see what we can do so when we all went back to LA to our homes, we started working. I literally wrote all day, every day at Neil's house. So he'd wow. go to the studio all day and then he'd come home late at night and I would be waiting there for him. Um, and then we'd go over all the songs that I wrote or riffs or whatever it was, ideas I had for that day. And then we'd work into the night. I mean, the guy is a, he's an animal when it comes to, 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 working yes, you know um yes. you know i mean an, an absolute animal and he doesn't have to be he can be like you know what i'm just going to coast and relax and whatever right. no he really loves um working uh on music and stuff so that's what we did so it when we felt that we had the album which double clips is the album yes. <laughs> in awesome. my opinion yes that's when uh, we said okay let's now let's shop this thing and then of course every you know, a big manager and record company, everyone wanted this, this stuff. And, uh, that's, that's what, that's basically, that was the birth. And then he was with Dean Castronovo right. from bad English at the time. And he goes, I want to bring Dean into it. And Dean goes, I got a, a great bass player, Todd Jensen. He's on tour right now with, with uh, David Lee Roth. But once he's off tour, let's grab him. I'm telling you, this guy's going to fit because we auditioned hundreds and hundreds of incredible bass players but we're just looking for that fit you know yeah. and so then that's how the, the the band was was born and again hardline the name really not not too much thought into it it's at hardline. all People think, oh, they were, yeah hardline it was just uh it was i don't remember which president was in office at the time but it was a like a news piece and said such and such i don't know maybe it was clinton i don't remember right. was uh hard lines this and we went, oh that's kind of cool hard line all right, yeah. let's go for it. And that well, was it. There you go. I wish I had more uh, of a dramatic, uh, <laughs> you know, birth of the name. But yes. Just like brunette. We're like, we're brunette. Okay, good. Brunette. That's it. The the end. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, my I, next I, my next band is going to be called Refrigerator because I like to go to it a lot. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Refrigerator. That's good. it. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. Playing live tonight. Refrigerator. <laughs> refrigerator. Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready open to it up. open the fridge? <laughs> Grab that taco. Okay. <laughs> And bite. Oh, you, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> now, speaking of which, I, I was thinking. <clears throat> excuse me. I was thinking about mm-hmm. uh, Neil. Though, how cool would it be? You know, you're sitting there. You got a turkey leg in your hand, and you're like, you know, you got a mouthful of, you know, dressing, and you're like, Neil, yeah. Neil, what's up? Can we, you know, play some music sometime? You know, just at a table, at a setting. There's Neil across the table. I'm just, it just, it's just in my mind. I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, you know. So, so Neil is a, was obviously a, a massive rock star, and he sold a couple of records. Just a few. Three. Yeah, and um, but Neil was always Neil. He was just a great, down to earth. Uh, still is, you know, dude that mm. just wants to play music. And um, but there was that occasion where you'd be like, yeah, in the chicken leg, just like you know, right, and <laughs> yeah. it was stuck in between your teeth. That's and it. You look over and. There's Neil Sean, Neil Sean with freaking Journey, and he had some chicken stuff in his teeth too. <laughs> he, so, he's he's just a regular yeah. guy after all. He's got yeah, just a regular dude. He's got but cranberry sauce really, in his shirt. It really hit me so like in the in our little like home studio setup thing, you know, I always had a, like a little keyboard and everything because we're you know we're writing songs, right. and it wasn't until I went. Dun, 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 yeah. dun. And when he now. grabbed his guitar and he went, well, that's when I think I soiled myself and I saved those underwear. 
that's when it, the, the real you've got them now don't like, you yeah. holy crap because then you could fix yeah i got them on now <laughs> i reversed them so but uh that's when i realized that really like you you envisioned the guy with the big fro yeah. on stage and yeah. um yeah and so that's and let me just give you a little little, little uh, story so that sure. fro that neil had that was actually our manager herbie herbert who was the guitar neil's guitar tech way back in the right. santana days herbie herbert used to there's the dog there you go cue the dog there's the dog the um he used to pick his hair out for him oh wow show. wow that's awesome <laughs> that's, yeah Bo, the, quiet awesome. my dog's hungry and i'm not gonna feed him you gotta wait for mommy you gotta wait for mommy just relax. Wait for right, mommy. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go upstairs. <laughs> Hang that's, on a second. This, that's fine. This dog's not gonna leave me alone. That's this is good. real life, people. This is life. Hey. This is real life. That's it. Stay right there, dog. He's a good boy. Just stay don't hey, bite. Baby. Yeah, don't bite my ass. Hang on, right there. You stay right there. Stay. I'm going to Down, boy. Studio. <laughs> okay, Roll over, sorry, man. I'm Roll back. over. <laughs> Damn. You said oh, Herbie Herbert, and he started barking. I wonder if that yeah. was the that was the magic Maybe. word for today. It might have been Herbie Herbert. Doesn't sound like <laughs> <Roof>. to me, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. So Herbie, he heard Herbie Herbert or Herbie yogurt. Herbie, Maybe, yeah, Herbie yeah, yogurt. So. Okay, I couldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So Neil was, uh, yeah, uh, just a very normal, still is normal dude that loves to create music he's that's all he's thinking about all the time i mean all of us were like that yeah. i don't think i've had a full night's sleep since i was six years old right i just it's too much going you on can't shut it off you it. can't shut it off that's it yeah um and i was thinking earlier you know when you said that neil brought dean in like bad english must have just broken up like days before y'all got together right it had to be because well, it was like right at the end of their album it just I think in well, 91. I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't tell a lie. So that we actually caused that breakup um, because Neil was so in love with this music, wow. this hard line music, and he really wanted to rock. And and Bad English was getting even, you know, a little softer and a little more, too, you know, poppier. And he's just like, man, I just want to rock. And so yeah. that kind of just, we sort of, you know, made that kind of disappear. Wow. Is, yeah, is this a scoop? Can I, is this like well, breaking news, or has this been told? Yeah, I, I, I might have told. Well, yeah, it's a little bit of a scoop. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's kind I, of a. I want to hear breaking news on this show. You know, that's what I want to. <laughs> well, that's that's breaking news. Hey, that's Broke pretty good. Bad English. There you go. I like that. I mean, sorry, but John. I mean, wait. We didn't. I mean, that was all on Dean and and Neil. That was their decision. They uh -huh. wanted to, uh, you know, it, you know, dissolve that whole thing. My brother and I didn't say, hey, guys, you break up that freaking band. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you did that. it. As a matter of fact, so here's – this is sort of a scoop. When Neil wanted to join Hardline, we said no. Oh, wow. I said no. I didn't I didn't have the vision for the band at all. It Jeez. wasn't we, – we had a, a different vibe and feel that we wanted, and uh, he was he – was, he was mad. I remember him telling my sister, like, I can't believe they don't want me in the band. Jeez. You told and Neil Sean, no, yeah, I cannot, no. cannot believe it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we did. And then, uh, <laughs> and then he just kept pushing. <laughs> so then finally I said to my brother, I said, listen, what do we have to lose uh, other than everything? Yeah. Um, no. I said, what do we have to lose? <laughs> you know, let's, let's give it a go. I mean, Neil is a great guy and we all get along like brothers and, we're writing amazing music together. I mean, who gives a shit? You know, because at right. the time we were so, we were so jaded with having this look, and the, and and Neil had shorter hair, we had long hair. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was a stupid thing on on my part. It had you know shouldn't have, it shouldn't have been about hair. It should have been about music. Period. I should have said yes immediately. But anyway, that's a scoop for you. Wow. Well, you know, when I first heard. I think the first song I heard was a song called Can't Find My Way, and they were playing it on the radio. Can't find my way. Yeah. Very good. What a song. Do -do -do -do. And that, that little intro, I said, that's Neil Sean on that. I knew right away, and I was like, man. 
So I, I got the cassette tape. That's right, kids. The cassette, cassette tape. tape. I still have it. How's that? I still have it. And it's almost 30 cool. years old. Um, wow, that's cool. And I used to play it, man, all the time. I actually couldn't find my way to my girlfriend's house when I first met her and I was going over to her house. That song was playing and I couldn't find my way. I was like, I can't find, you know. But, uh, yeah, and uh, that's a cool story, though. But uh, I, I lost my train of thought. But anyway, uh, where was I? Um, uh, let's see. The dogs were barking. The dogs were barking. <laughs> We broke up. Uh, <laughs> you you broke up. You didn't want Neil in your band. The guy he band. can't play a guitar to save his life. Yeah, bro. people are like Jesus. This Johnny guy's a real asshole. <laughs> I don't think they're going to listen because of it. All the Journey fans are like, I'm not listening to this guy. Hey, I hate the son of it. He sucks. Um, <laughs> but his hair was cool. Hey, but um, you know what? When I heard though, but I heard the album. And I was like, man, I love, and it was jamming. And I, Journey's my favorite band of all time, of course, and Neil. But mm -hmm. um, when I heard the guitars and your voice and the whole thing, man, it was rocking. And it was like the best. Y'all were the best sound at that time. And it was just, I mean, it was like the hair bands, you know, but it was yeah, better. We, it was better. We were just a lit. We were just a little too late with that sound, bro. A year or two earlier, and things would be. I, look, I'm grateful. I've had an amazing career. I'm now working on album number 95. Wow. Who who gets to make 95 albums in their life? 95. I'm gonna 95. Yes. Whoa. And I yeah, and I've got slated another six on top of this and i can't talk about the that those albums yet but there's a i i mean i'm grateful man so the timing people's like oh they would have been so huge well we were huge we did very very well <laughs> everybody did well i was a young punk in my 20s i bought my first house so i was like 22 wow and uh yeah and and i've been working ever since so no complaints from me, man, but uh, that was a weird, strange time when the whole grunge thing came yeah. in. Uh, but it is what it is, and, you know, it's called musical growth. And, you know, and even if the, the times change and the music sa uh, style changes, you got to kind of – you got to go with it, man, because yeah. that's just what's happening. So all these people that get hung up on Double Eclipse, which I love that album, and it's epic – Right. They're like, and they compare everything to Double Eclipse. Okay. Yeah. Listen, it's the new album, Heart, Mind, and Soul, that's coming out next month. It's Hardline. It's me. I wrote it with with uh, some of my bandmates, uh, with Alessandro and with uh, uh, Mario Procodani. It's us. But it's not Double Eclipse. Right. If you love Double Eclipse, go and play it. <laughs> Let's break it out <laughs> of the closet and fucking play it. That's it. You know what I mean? It's, it, you have to grow. So uh, anyway, I've had a great career, and um, after this phone call, I'm going to end it. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not going to end the career. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, but man, seriously, that's a lot of freaking albums. I can't even believe it. Sometimes I have to go to my own Wikipedia. And yeah, really. Them. I'm like, no, I said, that can't be like, right. I forgot and that. Go, yeah, I forgot that. Insane. Old. Man, yeah. that's crazy. So you've been busy all this yeah. this whole time. So after the yeah. the the band broke up because of the grunge thing and then but you got back with hardline about what 10 years later how did that happen yes yeah, so um you know after the we all kind of split up we never really officially said we quit we're done we're breaking up it was never like that it was like once the, the record company and the uh, you know and the music changed right. and we knew that we were uh, you know it was going to be a struggle to get support it kind of more it was more of a fizzle right and because just it was the reality was like look man i got a freaking ferrari payment and it's coming due on the 15th of the month and let's go Are we so everyone just had to work you know what i mean right or sell the ferrari one of the two <laughs> but uh it was like that so we didn't like no one hated each other no one like, the summer to work what's over it was never never like that it was just like okay um what's next we got to go work so when you go through something like that, so I was a young punk, and we had like a eight and a half million dollar record deal as a young punk, right? And that's a lot of damn money, you know, to be, uh, you, you know, that's, that's, that was one of the biggest record deals in a long time. And then when it's gone, 
I will tell you, bro, you need some therapy. Yeah, I bet. So my therapy was time. I just needed time to just, you know, figure things out. Like, okay, where do I want to do? Where do I want to be? It was like a whirlwind because you're, you're, you know, um, who was it? it? Was David Lee Roth that used to say, "Here today, gone tomorrow afternoon," or you know what I mean, <laughs> or right. gone in the afternoon, something yeah. like that. Um, and and that's sort of the you know even you know you work all your life to build that amazing first record, and then it's like okay, it's over. And yeah, so I needed time, and then it wasn't until uh, Serafino from Frontiers Music just kept breaking my balls he said i want to do a hardline record right. and i said no nah, no nah, no no hardline record thank you <laughs> he's like i'll give you x amount of money i said no it's not about the money for, for, i don't i don't want to do i'm not ready to do anything hardline he said well hardline's your voice and i said well i appreciate that but not interested he goes i'll give you this much money <laughs> and he got bigger and bigger and i'm thinking that's not about the money i don't want i don't forget about the money it's like no no i don't i'll give you this much money but anyway it was not about the money it was about the time yeah. that had to be right for mentally to say okay i'm going to resurface and it's going to be all new and it's a hell of a risk to take but i took it you know why i took it bro because um the people deserve it i love to sing and uh, and I thought, well, you know, uh, either people going to accept it or they're not. Right. And I've already been through, you know, a lot of rejection in my life, you know, coming up in the music business and coming up in the theater business, you know, uh, you get a lot of freaking no's. So I was pretty thick skinned and I said, all right, let's give this a go, Serafino. Now it's been Jesus, 20, 20 years. Wow. I think I, yeah, it's crazy crazy that i was thinking i was thinking about that uh you know you were t talking about all the things you went through and going back to that song that in the hands of time which yeah. i love from that the first album and thank you man yes me it, too i can relate is that really like a true live experience for that for you yeah so that was that's exactly right man that that song was my my father's favorite song too I love it. Used to, my dad used to always say keep going kids keep going keep pushing keep going keep going keep going he would never let us fail just you know um he would just support and support go 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 keep going like we are dad and uh so yeah that's that song uh is just uh, you know, literally about that. It's all in the hands of time. You just have to keep pushing, pushing, focus, focus. But then that song takes a twist when, um, you know, you come to the realization of, hey, listen, have I been grateful? Right. You know, once I, once, once I'm under the light, do I recognize it? Do I, am I thankful? And I will tell you a million percent, there isn't a day goes that goes by that I don't wake up and I'm grateful. That's a good never. Th yeah, that's I good. never get on stage and go, no, oh, I don't feel like playing. I, I know a lot of guys that do that. I don't feel like playing tonight. Really, man? Right. Let me tell you, there's 748,000 musicians that would probably give their left testicle to be on stage <laughs> right now. Right. That's exactly and, right. And there's people in the audience that paid. They want to see a show. They want to release from their stresses in their life, from their work, from their, you know, from their finances, from their work. Yes whatever and so let's give them a show so um anyway in the hands of time is encompasses all of that man it's one big one big ball of uh of uh, hell yeah there yeah you, you described it very well that's good man uh oh, thank you and and i know you got a new album coming out but with each hardline album have you yeah. did you have a yeah like a certain formula or do you they just evolve as you go along or do you say i'm gonna do this in an album yeah no never never we never think about what we want to accomplish as far as like let's write an album uh, you know about uh, you know a really green lawn and, and some beautiful bushes <laughs> right we just we just never do it that way it all starts with <clears throat> excuse me with a uh, usually it's a, a musical feeling you're a, little, a riff or something it's yeah. got some just vibe to it and that's uh, i'm grateful to to mario uh, percudani he's just such a phenomenal guitar player and he usually sends us seven hundred and fifty thousand riffs 
and we just start, you know, I'll take the idea. And then if I hear something, it goes from there. If I don't, eh, we shelf it next one. Okay. Oh, I love this, man. Oh my God. And usually it's funny. I was just telling my, my wife, I was just, we were listening to uh, one of the songs um, on heart, mind and soul called we belong. And the song is actually was written by my son, oh, my, wow. my son, Brandon, who's 17 years old. He's learning how to play All the right. guitar and he came, he came downstairs and that opening riff is his idea. Wow. And when this, that song's not released yet, but once the album comes out, everyone will know it's called we belong. And the second he, you know, came down, I, I literally recorded him with my phone. I said, Brandon, that's really freaking awesome. I love that. I was like, Oh, thanks dad. And then I turned it into a song. He didn't even know it, but we belong. It, it just, I knew right away. It was, it's about the relationship, not between man and woman or man and man or woman and woman. I don't give a shit. Right. Love is love. But I, it's the relationship between music and and person you know and how you can you know the song never will a song will never leave you alone ever yeah, right. so it's called we belong and it's just really cool so sometimes the ideas are just a simple little riff that i just hear something and i was telling my wife i go i listened to this because we were in the car and it's like one of her favorite songs too uh it's not because our son inspires just a really great song but I even stop myself even today after this long career and go, I, I don't know how I wrote that. Wow. Like, where did that come? I just thank God. <laughs> there you thank go. God that it, ideas keep coming. You know it. what I mean? Wow. It's wild. It's just a wild thing. But that's our that's basically our process. What I was noticing uh, that the band now, the version of the band you have now, isn't everybody Italian? Oh yes, brother. And I'm Ooh, thinking, with pasta cake. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that's my Mangiari. bad Italian. Mangiari. Yeah. Mangiari. yeah, my mom's. My mom said, you know, go do the dishes, and I said, I'm not going to do the dishes. And she said, How can you talk that way? You're not Italian. Okay, that's a bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, but bad. you could. <laughs> you should name the band Linea Dura, right? Is it what that, the hell does that mean? That's hardline in Italian. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, just, I, look, I, I looked it up. I did not know that. You looked that up? I looked that up. Son of a gun. I'm going to check my Google Translate. Yeah, that's it. Correct. Google Translate is great. I Linea Dura. You, okay. The dog is barking his ass off downstairs <laughs> wanting dinner. His Go feed ruthless. the dog. Go feed no, the dog. No, 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 no. Someone's down there handling it. Oh, it's okay. all good. But yeah, a bunch of Italians. Um, so the unique thing about this band is, yeah, it's a band, of course. But this is a family yeah. like you would think after all the years and touring together and riding in buses and planes and trains and taxis and whatever else that when you got back to the hotel and you got into your room that you just want to be alone. But this group, after a big show, we we have a little after show snack or whatever. We head back to the hotel and the texts start right away. Hey, are you up? What time you want to meet for breakfast? I don't know. How about nine? Hey, how about eight? Hey, you were really awesome tonight. Wow. So were you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you. I love. Let's meet at nine o'clock. Let's meet at eight. Let's. Uh, and then, it's the weirdest thing. So Italians are very affectionate. We hug and kiss. <laughs> Even the guys, we hug and kiss. So you just got to imagine, like, the breakfast room in Slovakia, when a bunch of Italians <laughs> wake up and we start kissing each other like, for breakfast. Right. Like, oh, good morning. Hey. Good morning. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it's a cool thing, man. It's it's a family, wow. and uh, yeah, it's I can't I miss them so much with this COVID bullshit. Yeah, we can't wait to get back, uh, uh, you know, on the road together and laugh because that's all we do is laugh, 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 laugh. That's awesome. That's it's yeah. good to have like a family and a you know in your musicians and have a good time and enjoy what you're doing. Um, Absolutely. And speaking of uh, pals, I know you did an album with Dean Castronovo, another guy, yeah. a pal. And he, uh, he's, he's the quiet one of you two, right? Isn't he really shy? Oh shit. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Jesus, man. I thought you were serious. No, me. I'm not serious. <laughs> Dean, Dean, oh, Dean, is like a, Dean is like a hyena on crack. <laughs> that's how that's how jumped up that boy is. God, He's hyper, Dean is one 
of the most talented humans yes. on this planet. Right. This guy can play the freaking drums, the piano, the skin flute, the, the trombone, <laughs> the clarinet. He can play mm. with himself. He plays everything. <laughs> he can play with, play it all. Play the fool. Play everything. He's, he could, yeah, he's no, he's so freaking phenomenal. And um, and he he was always an amazing singer. It's just uh, you know, in Hardline, it just wasn't the focus. You know, for him, it was, right. it was drums. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's our Dino boy. Awesome. He's a great old boy. And that was a great album to do yeah, together. I love God, that. Album. We loved it. It's awesome. Great one. Are well, you? There's, are you doing? Like an... There's going to be a. Yeah, I'm going to answer your question. Yeah, you are. How did you? You're psychic too. You, he sings great, everybody, oh, yeah. and he's psychic. Hey, what am I having for supper? <laughs> you're having that chicken dish with the rice and the. Beans. Oh wow. <laughs> Okay. See, this is scary. <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're having hot dogs, right? Tell okay, uh, it's true. Okay, that's true. Shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're we're going to we're planning it. We are in the planning phases, and it's looking like it's going to happen. Um, yeah, I don't know about this year, but twenty. Uh, where are we now? Twenty one, twenty two. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. We'll see. We All may right. fit it in this year. But we're, we're 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 thinking about it. We're planning it, for sure. And and the guys over at Frontiers, that's an awesome bunch of guys, right? That keep coming out with all this these good awesome bands that people need to check out, right? That's yeah, so I mean cool. they are. I, I call these guys. They are the uh, you know they're the band resurrection company. Yeah, I mean they 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 like they did CPR on a lot of bands. No, really, bring them back to life. I mean, think about it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's true. And they've, they've got their own little world, and we're all in our our little, you know, melodic rock world. Yeah. Because that, because that's what we do. That's awesome. I mean, and so they're uh, they they created that platform and and brought a lot of us to life. God bless them. Yeah. Well, you Still know, cranking. They're twenty five years now. Wow. Strong. Well, I, so I know that cool. I know Gene Simmons said that rock was dead. I'm I'm thinking he needs to check out Frontiers. Yeah, you know the uh, yeah. YouTube, you know, because I mean that's just some awesome music, including yeah, Hardline, and but the album is coming out July the ninth, right? Yeah, something like that. Or, is that July. right? In that area, I think so. I Could think be. that's it. July six, seven, eight, nine. Something In like that, that week. <laughs> um, and uh, but you got the new single is Surrender. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. Um, one, one second, I'm getting, I'm getting notified here. Oh. Hang on a second. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm good. I so, Surrender. No, I, I, we, I have so many interviews. Thank, thank you, God, that people want to talk to me. Because <laughs> I know my wife doesn't. So, <laughs> I'm glad you guys do. Yeah, wow. so, Surrender. So, so this album with, with Heart, Mind, and Soul that's coming out, um, you know, there was a lot of, focus on you know the emotional side of life you know a lot of all the stress from covid and everyone you know in you know losing work and finances and just that you know death and everything right not to be heavy but i really focused on a lot of the mental health issues and there's a lot of messages in this in this album to you know to support uh, making sure that people you know take notice of that and get help um yeah, I mean, look, I'm not a therapist, I'm a singer, but there is, uh, you know, a third of this country, of the U.S., that suffers from uh, a mental health disorder, depression, and, and shit like that. Right. It's a real thing, and luckily I don't. I mean, I think um, on occasion I'm tired, but um, I watch it on TV, I hear about it on the radio, and people really suffer from this and so surrender although it's titled surrender the hook the chorus is never surrender and it came to me when i learned that a fan was going to take their life and then um played one of my songs and said no no i wow. can't do that to myself wow. that was heavy bro mm. i mean that was heavy yes and um and some of the lyrics in that song is like, you needed me more than I knew you. Like, I don't know everyone out there that's hurting. Right. It's impossible. Right. You know what I mean? But I know they're there. And so the, the message in Surrender is, of course, that 
that never look back, just keep pushing forward and, you know, recognize that your know, mental health issues, depression and everything you feel is no different to getting a cold and you got to go to the doctor if you need antibiotic or whatever. Same thing with mental health. And so I'm really plugging it this year just because because I really, truly in the depths of my soul, I really love people. I love all people, right. all awesome. young, old, green, white, black. Right. I don't care. Right. I love people and I really um, wish people well, you know, and so the album has a lot of those kind of messages in it. It's uh, it's definitely like a summer crank up album. And um, yeah, I'm digging it. And so I, I hope everyone gets the messages, you know, inside these songs. So that was Surrender and uh, that's out on uh, on the tube uh, right now. And along with Fuel to the Fire, which was just a straight rock. I just wanted to come out with an in your face, straight rock tune and that's what that one is. So awesome. Lots of great. And these, I don't even think these are the best songs on the album, to be honest with you. Wow. There's a lot of cool <laughs> music, man. There's some powerful ballads. There's a song called Heavenly, which is just like recognizing that, you know what? You need to stay humble. You need to be humble because there's a lot bigger out there than you. Right. You know what I mean? And um, uh, my wife reminds me of that daily. <laughs> So, uh, no, I'm kidding. She's cool. But, um, yes. Yeah, so, oh, that's awesome. uh, yeah, awesome. it's, it's, it's a really fantastic album and I can't wait for you to buy 634 copies because sure. I need to pay my mortgage. I will have to, I'll have to do something. Right, thank you, bro. I, I owe you for that, for that scoop that you gave me earlier. And then, the, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, send the check. I, I will send the check. Well, I, I thank you. I know you got, you're a busy man and you've got more interviews and stuff like that. So I'll let you go, ma'am. It's been a pleasure to talk to one of the best singers ever and one of the coolest bands ever hard line oh thank and, you bro thank you yes i am busier than a one-legged kickboxer <laughs> that visual? That i know that guy very you know that guy yeah. that's one strong son of a he bitch is. Man. one leg bop, 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 bop. never talk back to that guy i'm just saying no hell no <laughs> right 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 in the nose oh. thank you bro i really i appreciate your time and your support and your and your kind words and, and you, to all the listeners thank you guys for allowing me to uh to have this career because I say this on every single interview without these, without the fans, without the listeners, what am I, man? I'm just like this voice in thin air. So uh, I'm nothing with it without everybody. I'm just a voice, you know, if, if, if everyone is, is not there for me. So I appreciate all the support and all the love and I wish everybody well safe. And hopefully we all get back uh, on the stage here shortly, which we plan yes. on it. And uh, life goes on. There you go. That's that's all that needs to be said. Thanks so much, man, for, for talking it, to me, Take, man. You got it, man. Take care of yourself. Be well, and uh, maybe I'll catch you down south there hey, one of these days. I'll see you, man. All right, thanks a lot. All right, brother. All right. You got it. Take care, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.